click on this three uh, this three lines and there will be same option like new project from template. Click on that. Yeah, so once you click on that, just scroll down and there will be one option called basic multi target application. OK, so just select this basic multi target application and now just click on start. So what is basic multi target application? Multi target application means with uh, the project will be only one only only single project would be there and within that project we can have a different UI five applications or Fury applications within that. So only one project will comprise of different projects or different uh, Fury applications or uh, UI five applications within that. So just click on this multi target application template. Means, uh, that means one connectivity, right? You are asking. This yes, is one yes. Connectivity. It, it is a one app which comprise of various Fury apps within this. OK, because when you deploy this, the instances that will be created on the launch pad would, would be only three. OK, but let's say if I'm if I want to deploy all four apps like the this binding mode, customer app, JSON model and JSON model project Four apps. If I want to deploy, so for every app, three instance will be created for every app. Three likewise, four apps are there. Then total 12 instance will be created for this. But when you go with basic multi target application template, only three instances will be created for all the four apps. OK. And then and it will for sure it will help you to do some cost cutting. Because for every instance that is getting generated on on the Cloud Foundry, uh, based on that customer will be charged. OK, customer will be charged for that instance because this is purely cl Cloud Foundry runtime, right? So the, uh, the the way you're consuming the Cloud Foundry services accordingly, uh, it will be charged. OK, it will be charged by SAP to the customer. So but when you go with the multi target application, only three instances will be created and and for sure like you can save lot of uh, instances which are unnecessarily getting created. You can save that. So let me select this basic multi multi target application template and now just click on start. OK, so when you click on the start, now there is an option called enter a project name. So you can give any project name like this is an MTA, uh, MTA based project. So ZMTA underscore. Uh, let me check because I have a couple of. This is like UI if underscore apps. OK. So I'm giving a name as ZMT underscore UI underscore app and just clicking on finish now. As soon as you click uh, your BS will reload. And now it will only open that specific MTA in a new tab. See only that specific MTA is available, but that's fine. OK, so this is the first step. First, we have to create a basic multi target application project. And once it is done, so this is what the application or the project that you will get. Now within this MTA, how to add a projects? OK, first we'll create a new project, a new new template. Sorry, first we will add a new UI fi application template within this and second we will add an existing application within this MTA. So two ways we'll see. OK, so first in this whenever you want to create a new project, right click on this MTA.yaml file. So this MTA.yaml file is nothing but it is a descriptor file for this multi target application and this MTA.yaml file will have all the module related detail. What are the modules in this case projects? So if if I want to create a new project within this MTA, let's say I want to add a UI fi application within this MTA. So that UI fi application would be considered as a module in a in case of MTA. OK, so all that module resources details will be available under this MTA dot YAML file. So just close this right click on this MTA dot YAML file. And there will be the option called open with text editor. OK, so as of now you can see it's it's purely blank. This is just a, uh, a specific version of that MTA. And after that, this is the ID and version only that uh, only this basic details are available within this MTA.yaml file. 
because as of now we haven't added any MTA module. OK, so now let's add the MTA module. So right click on this MTA.yaml file and there will be the option called create MTA module from template. OK, right click on MTA.yaml file and first module we will create now in this MTA. So for that choose option create MTA module from template. Now for once you choose this, now we have a various options like you can create a HANA based module project. You can create SAP Fury application project. You can create a workflow module related project. <coughs> See all these are different options like you can add within the same MTA. It's not that only it's available for Fury. So you can also create a project with respect to workflow or with respect to HANA. So all these are different options to create that. OK, a same environment, a same uh, target application which can have a different uh, which can have a different application which is not independent on the environment. So now here I will go with first before I select this SAP Fury application first I will add app router configuration. OK, so this is like a first mandatory step that we have to do app router configuration. Select that and now just click on start. First, what we need to add? First, we need to add app router configuration. OK, now in this app router configuration, why this app router configuration is required? Because uh, let me click on the sign in once. Wait. Yeah. So let's go to HTML5 application. OK, so when you go to HTML5 application, so the apps which are deployed on this on this Cloud Foundry, it is totally managed by application router. See, you can see manage application router provided by SAP Launchpad service. So if I want to configure this application on the Launchpad service, so who is managing that application router? So here in app, in app router configuration, we have to select manage app router as a runtime. OK, not a standalone. We have to go with manage app router. And after that, we have to provide a unique business solution name for that project. And then that this name only will be uh, this name is responsible to identify all those apps under that single MTA. So for example, wait. Yeah, so for example, you can see I have deployed three different projects, right? I have deployed three different projects, but for all that project, you can see the same business solution name. OK, business solution name is same and but it has a various project. So likewise, see there is one more example here for this. Also, I have deployed two different projects. OK, so this business solution name can easily help you to identify the, all those apps under that single MTA project. OK, so that business solution name we have to provide here. So I'll provide red MT underscore UI underscore demo underscore apps. OK, so that is the that is the module name. Sorry, that is the app router or the business solution name for that project. And after that, do you do you plan to add a UI? Yes, and just click on next. That's it. Once you do. Can you see under this MTA.yaml file? This piece of code will be generated. See, automatically this code will be generated within this MTA.yaml file, in which we will have a basic runtime and how the applications are getting managed. Everything that basic details will be available, and also the security related things will be available in this MTA.yaml file. That's it. So, this is the first step. First, after creating an MTA project, add app router configuration as a module. So once that is done, now we can add Fury applications. OK, so to add a Fury application, right click on this MTA.yaml file. Again, choose same option. Create MTA module from template. Again, choose same option MTA module from template and now you can go with SAP Fury application. Click start. So this time guys uh, in this I will basically consume Northwind destination now. OK, so you can go with UI freestyle. You can go with UI application. Click next. And 
now we need to select a data source now. So we'll we'll do it now, guys. OK, so I'm going to go. With, uh, uh, I will select the option connect to system. OK, so when you say connect to system, the destinations which are available, the destinations, right? All this list will be available under that connection list. OK, all these destinations will appear in this system list. See, can you see all this list? So from here I will go with Northwind. OK, I'm selecting that Northwind destination and now it is asking for service path. So from where I can get this service path? So as you know, like we uh, few minutes back, we have opened this Northwind service, right? I told you till odata.org, it is already configured inside the destination. Now, apart from that, like from slash we do, we have to copy this entire thing. Copy that. Go back here and you can paste that here. That's it. Now it will just cross verify whether that URL is right or wrong. See, once it is valid, then only this next button will be enabled. Now just click on next. OK, now let's provide a name so uh, we can give a name. So it has a various uh, services so we can go with products. We can read the data from products, so it already has some couple of records. OK, we'll use this uh, service. So I'll say. Products. Data. And just click next. OK, now we need to provide a module name. So now you got got, uh, got it, guys. Why we why there is a module here? Because module means every project under the every MTA, like the projects that we create, it will be considered as a module. So just provide a module name. So module name, I will provide it as it's a Z product project. And you can provide a detail app title as products. And you can give a namespace anything like. OK, now just scroll down and there will be the one option called add deployment configuration to MTA project. So whatever the project you are creating now, OK, so that details will be added under this MTA.yaml file. OK, so that details will be added under this MTA.yaml file. So there is one more option add FLP configuration because when you want to deploy this app, so for sure we need a FLP configuration for that. So I'm going to say yes for that also. And just click next. OK, so when you say yes, then. Then what all things we need? So so you can see uh, the target environment. Now we have to choose a target environment on which environment we want to deploy this app. So as I said, only there are two environments which are supported as of now. You can deploy this app on Cloud Foundry. Second option is you can deploy this app on ABAP repository. So when you click on this drop down, can you see the two options? You can go with Cloud Foundry or ABAP. So I'm going with a Cloud Foundry now. And now it, it will ask for the destination, like which destination you want for that. So I basically need a Northwind only. And now just click next. Yes, now it will ask for the Fury Launchpad configuration. So this is only for the Cloud Foundry purpose. OK, not for on premise. This is only for the Cloud Foundry purpose. So we'll select the semantic object. So I'll give a semantic object as. Uh, this is like a. That is the semantic object. You can give action as display. So always the action would be like manage display. All this would be the basic actions. So we'll give an action as a display. And title uh, we will give it as title. So what should be the the, the fury tile title for this? The title would be like it's a. Product. Information. And subtitle you can give it as. Uh, this is the UI app. And now just click on finish. 
OK, so can you see the project is getting created now in this case? Uh, let it create. And we will also see in mta.yaml file what all configuration uh, it's been added for that project. It's it's taking more time than usual. Uh, let's give at least more time for this. So meanwhile, guys, uh, if your BS uh, tool is already open, like you can create a project and all. So it's creating couple of files. Let's hold on for that. Yeah. So once it is done, fine. So you can see under this project, there are various uh, UI5 deploy.yaml file is created, UI5.yaml file is created. All these files are required for uh, deploying this app on the Cloud Foundry. But one of the important file which is always required for the deployment is UIFI-deploy.yaml UI file. So this file is must for deployment purpose. OK, so before you deploy any UIFI or Fury application on the Cloud Foundry, deployment descriptor file is required. And that deployment descriptor file you can uh, like as I said, like at the start also you can you can create that file. If not manually also you can create that file. OK, both ways I will show you. So this one is just like when we created this project at the start only we have uh, we have selected the option as yes for creating a deployment configuration file and parallelly to also add a FLP related configuration file. So for that we have chosen yes as an option. So that's why we are able to see these files. So when we when we add one more project like existing project, uh, we will drag and drop that project with, within this MTA and we'll see like uh, manually how we can add this UI fi deployment configuration file and then for that what all steps we need to follow. OK, so once this project is created, if you go to MTA dot YAML file. Sorry. When you go to MTA dot YAML file, just scroll down a little bit and there will be one one required part. Uh, there will be one called as a section artifacts. OK, so every time every time you create a new module within this MTA, so this piece of artifact code will be created for that uh, for that project. And similarly, this below piece of code is also getting created for that project. So entirely now this artifacts and this below code. So this piece of code it will repeat for each and every project. OK, and then let's and this code is also this code is only responsible for building that app and deploying that app because in MTA we can have multiple Fury applications like let's say within this MTA you have five Fury apps. And now you want to deploy all the apps. OK, let's say in, in some cases what will happen? You don't want to deploy one app rest four apps you want to deploy. So in that case, what you can do, you can simply go to mta.yaml file and you can comment this piece of code. When you comment that piece of code, so that specific app, it won't be deployed and it won't be builded. Rest all remaining four apps, it can be built and it will be deployed. So that all depends on this mta.yaml file. 
So within this MTA, you have an option like which app you want to build and at the same time, which app you want to deploy. So all this is depends on this MTA.yaml file because this is the main descriptor file which has all the module related details and resources related details. OK, so let me come uncomment this again. OK, that's it. So this is the first step that we have seen. So let's check the contents inside the project that we created and I'll show you what all changes are required with. What all code it got generated while adding that deployment configuration and FLP configuration and also that app router configuration. So go to manifest and I'll show you the changes. So when we add a FLP configuration, so this piece of code will be added within your application and that also inside manifest.json file. OK, after the data source, so data source is getting ended at 28 line number. So after that, there is one piece of code which is added for cross navigation. And this piece of code is responsible for creating your Fury tile on Launchpad service. So the details that you provide, the semantic object details, action, the title, subtitle, and also the icon. Whatever you provide, accordingly, your tile will be created on the Fury Launchpad. OK, that basic overview or that preview you can get by providing the details within this uh, properties. OK, so you can also add an icon here. Uh, let me just search for recipe icons. You can explore. Uh, this is the product, right? Product. So I can go with this option. I'll copy that. I'll paste it here. The product icon. OK, and this FLP title and FLP subtitle, it is already available within this IIT. If you go to IIT, the title that we provided for the tile, it's, it's already there. Product details. Uh, this is FLP title. See. Product information and subtitle is UI Fi app. So this product information and UI Fi app title will be available within that uh, within that launchpad site manager. I'll, I'll show you. OK, so first of all, once you add the tile related details, sorry, the FLP tile related details and after that the app router configuration. So the app router configuration that we created at the first module the name that we provided it will be available within this SAP dot cloud service. So this piece of code is also getting added within your manifest dot JSON file. OK, so uh, you remember right guys when we created this empty project, the second step that we created app router configuration so that in, in app router configuration we provided one name for that business solution so that name Related code will be generated within this manifest for that app and this piece of code will remain same for all the projects. OK, if I create one more project for that also this piece of code will remain same. What will change only this uh, cross navigation code will change in that also like only the property values will change. OK, only values will change nothing else. OK, so this is the first step. Uh, for creating an MTA project and adding a modules like app router configuration and a Fury application under.